From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hi folks, welcome to a special pre-election episode of Ropecast. I'm Peter Tischer, and I'm not with Roger Charlton, as I usually am. I am with an American today, with David Knott. Knott is the last name. Hi, David. Hi. And we're here to obviously talk about the election. And uh, we're not going to go over the electoral system because our podcast number 26 has it in all detail. Um, I'd like to talk to you about basically how can it happen that we have these two candidates? You know, Donald Trump, I don't think we have to say much about him, but Hillary Clinton is completely unpopular as well. And I was wondering, um, how did the, how can you become a candidate really? And I want you to give us maybe some more information about it. Well, I, um, it's been a long two years, um, because that's how long the campaigns lasted in general. And I come from Iowa, which is the first state in the nation to do a caucus. So we had about eight months of, um, presidential candidates coming in and talking to us in every city possible. A caucus is a sort of a pre-election, um, it to is. select the candidate, right? It is. Um, it's, it differs slightly from a typical election where you just write down your vote and turn it in, mm -hmm. um, in that it's much more public. You participated in that, you told me before the recording. Yes, I was actually a delegate for Bernie Sanders in Iowa. Cool. Uh, you'd have to explain it. How does that happen? How do you get to be a delegate? Well, for me, it was a, an accident, actually. I'd volunteered for the campaign before, and I went on caucus night to go give my vote. And how that works is you're in an open gym, and people walk a gym, around. A gymnasium where you play basketball. Correct, correct. Uh-huh. Very public place. And the person leading the event says, if you are for this candidate, candidate A, go stand in the right. If you're for candidate B, go stand in the left side of the room. Uh-huh. So there was a gymnasium, and under one basket, a bunch of people. Under the other basket, another bunch of people. Correct. And the bigger crowd wins. Yes, and we counted them by hand. Whoa. Do you have to be a party member? It differs from state to state. In Indiana, where I'm originally from, um, you don't register with a party at all. Mm -hmm. But in Iowa, you do have to be a member of the party. Uh -huh. You can register on the night of the caucus, however, or change your party. Okay. So on that night, you were with a winning crowd? Yes, thankfully. How did it go on? Well, I walked in and... Someone asked me, you volunteered for Bernie, right? I said, yes. And then they said, do you want to lead this here and be our captain tonight? Uh. So uh, I said, okay. <laughs> and um, after a person wins, the votes are split. There's a certain number of delegates each candidate gets based on their vote. Uh, we needed four delegates to move on to the next stage. Uh, and they said, you have to get them elected from the people in the room. Nobody wanted it, and they said, why don't you do it? Uh -huh. So I did. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. And then what? Then you do the same process um, three more times. You go on to the county level. There's another caucus there. You vote for your candidate, but also any issues that the party should address. And then you go on to your congressional district, which has another caucus. Uh, and then finally, six months later... We were in the state capital of Des Moines for the final statewide caucus. Again in a gymnasium? Much larger gymnasium, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and your state selected who? It was very close. Um, I think Hillary Clinton won by 0.25% of the vote. Uh-huh. Okay. So this is extremely popular in the sense not popular everybody likes it but popular that you know people from the street just go there and well select a candidate on a on a night yes is that an explanation how very well very surprising candidates can actually end up on the party platform 
That is definitely a part because a caucus in itself is not a day long thing where you can go whenever you want, but it's limited to people who are available from seven to nine in the evening. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's definitely a part. Uh, but I think that the Republicans and the Democrats have slightly different stories about how we got two such unpopular candidates. What do you mean? Uh, well, on the Republican side, there were, I believe, 19 candidates to begin with. Mm-hmm. Donald Trump was not very popular. He led the group, but only with about 30% of the vote. Uh, and so when you go into an election with 19 people and he wins with only 30% of the vote, in a winner-take-all system, which the Republicans had, he still gets all of the delegates, even though 70% voted against him. Okay. That explains it. And the the Democrats don't do it that way? The Democratic primary um, generally splits the votes um, in the states. Splitting the votes means there's a certain percentage that corresponds to the votes for the winner? Correct. If you win 50%, you get half of the delegates. Okay, okay, I get it. Okay, well, it's going to be a close election night. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're kind of anxious very, right now, very especially anxious. if you were originally in favor of Bernie Sanders, <laughs> yes, who is even further away from Donald Trump than Hillary Clinton is. I am very, very anxious as well. We'll have a special podcast on the 9th of November, just after election night on the 8th. But before we do that, I would like to ask you one question beforehand, which is a linguistic question. Sure. Um, I heard very often that Donald Trump is called, even by Hillary Clinton, the Donald. Now, we learn in English class, you can't do it as Germans do, put a definite article in front of a first name. Why do do they call them the Donald? Well, I have a theory. Um, So if there's only one of something in English, uh, so for example, we know the sun or the earth. Uh We use the definite article. Donald Trump has spent his entire life building his brand on his name and how unique and successful his name is. So my idea is that people have kind of grabbed onto that uniqueness, whether in a positive or negative sense, uh-huh. and attached the article to it. So he's now and forever the Donald, the okay. one and only. <laughs> okay. So I guess we'll just have to see whether it'll be either the Donald or another Clinton (laughs) in the Oval (laughs) Office. So, folks, um, stay tuned. Download in a few days our special podcast right after election night. For today, I will say goodbye. Thank you, David, for being here and telling us about this caucus. Thank you for having me. Okay, great. Bye-bye. Bye.